I had been studying faith for years, and God's called me to faith. What I was getting from the Lord is this is something the Lord has really taught me, and a lot of people don't understand this. And um, I'll just quote the verses. But Abraham, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. A lot of people said mean that. Oh, if you read that in Romans chapter ten, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. A lot of people think, well, you just got to read the Bible, brother. Just read. You know, people read the Bible all day long and they don't get faith. That's actually talking about a preacher coming and preaching the word and you have faith in the, that he's actually speaking from God and that you believe and that's how faith comes. But check this out. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything, anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his oh, ways. So nice. he just mapped out that if you're going to get to the place where you're going to please on, God, you cannot have any wavering, any doubt. Jesus, Jesus was a man filled with faith. He was God. And, and he came down to be an example. And he showed us that you can actually get to a place where there's no doubt. So the third level of faith, I said there's hope, believing, is knowing. When you get to the place of knowing, you're not just hoping anymore. Man. You're not just believing anymore. You're actually to the point of knowing. You know that God can Come do on. it. And you not only know that God can do it, you know we can do it for you. Woo. And you also know we can do it right now. Amen. Right. When you get to the place where you know that God can do it for you. And you know that God has the power to do it. Yes. And you also know that God can do it right now. That's Meaning right. not in the future. Yeah. You know, when you talk about healing, the Bible says, I, I would love to have a little, uh, like maybe sometime I could do this, but um, a lot of people don't understand the language of God. And if you look, most of the language is put into the time frame of time. Right? So the Bible says, by his stripes, you were healed. So I'm just doing a real a quick example. Right? This really helped me. Let's say this is the earth. And this is the moon. Right? And here's the sun, right? Mm -hmm. So what's time? Time is, we measure time by how many times the moon, the moon goes around the earth. Also how the sun goes around. So if you wind back time, 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross and he said, that's when you actually got healed. So a lot of people are on the earth going around. I'd love to do a diagram on this. Going around the earth. And then they say, God, they come to God. And they say, God, will you heal me? Now look, will you? Meaning that's in the future. Meaning sometime when the earth goes around or the moon goes around, or the sun goes around, maybe some year, sometime God will heal me. And so they don't understand that God is not on the earth. He's not on the moon. He's not on the sun. He's everywhere. Yes. So when, when you're talking to God, he's not, he, there's no time reference to him. You actually either have it or you don't have it. There's no way to God. Right? I mean, you talked about this a little, right? Yep. So a lot of people, when they come to God, they think, oh, right now I'm not healed, but maybe someday in the future when the moon goes around the earth and the <laughs> earth goes around the sun, someday over <laughs> here, maybe a year, two years, a month, that I'll get it. When God said, no, 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 wind back time, you actually got it back here. Right. When Jesus died on the cross, as by his stripes you were healed. Yes. And if you were to understand this principle, it will change your life. When you come to God, you have to talk in his language. That's right. You can't say, God, will you heal me? God, I hope yeah. you heal me. Yeah. God, I believe you heal me. God, I know you yeah. healed me. Yeah. You not only yeah. healed me, yeah. you did it when you died on the yeah. cross. Oh, no, yeah. I love it when yeah. he says like 39 stripes because there's been like 39 yeah. different that's diseases. Right. If you understand the time of God... Yeah. If you look in the Bible, most of it is based upon uh, reference to time. So let's look at 11, uh, Mark 11, that very popular verse. Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt his heart, but shall believe that those things as he says shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he says. Now look at the next verse. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, when you pray. believe that you receive them. Yes. And you, so one thing I've learned about God is when I go to God, when do you normally thank God or thank someone after they did something, right? But when we go to God, we thank him in advance, but we're really not thanking in advance. We're actually thanking Good. because when you thank God, mm -hmm. that means you believe he did it. 
So if I look back in time, he already did it, and I'm thanking God, and I'm in a place of thankfulness, then I know I have it. And I'm gonna, I'll just end, I have a little story I'll tell. Um, when I was young, God had told me about Smith Wigglesworth, Apostle of Faith, and I was reading books on that, and, and I was probably the farthest person from having, I was filled with fear, <laughs> doubt, unbelief. I, I didn't even know why God chose me to have faith. I'm like, God, I'm like the worst person. I got no faith at all. I not only, not only have faith, I'm filled with fear, doubt, and unbelief. Uh, but I believe, God, that he spoke that over me. And, and, you know, like Gideon, you know, you mighty man of valor. And God speaks, to, you know, God calls those things that be not as though they were. Well, he really did that with me 30 years yeah. ago. Because I'm like, I'm like the farthest from this. And it's taken me years to get to this level of faith and, yeah. and many trials and battles. So, um, and you really, you know, I love what Smith Wigglesworth said. He said, a lot of people said that they have faith, but you don't really know you have it until you put in a hard time and you mm -hmm. prove it. Mm -hmm. You get stuck in a hard time and you got to prove it. Mm -hmm. So I was married, and I had, and I uh, had my baby, my son coming along, and I didn't want my wife to work at that time, and I, uh, and so what I said is, uh, I went to my boss. I was a PE teacher at Christian school, and I said, "Will you? Uh, can I get a raise?" Because I said, when I did the math, how much money I was making wouldn't pay my bills, right? <laughs> and I needed her income, but then I had a child coming, so I'm like, "Well, I need, I, I got to get an answer." So I went to him, and he said, "Vince." We don't have the money. We can't do it. So I said, well, I just need to like, no, I'm going to go look for another job and because I got to take care of it. And I don't want my wife to work. I want her to raise my son. And I, and I really believe that's how it's supposed to be. So I went looking for a job. I couldn't find anything that paid anything more than what I was already making. I didn't have a lot of skills at that time. I wasn't very far. And so I'm like, God, I'm like, so I knew I had, I think I was three, she was three months along. So I knew I had six months to believe God. I said, well. So I started praying and praying and praying all day long. I mean, every, I mean, I'd be like, God I told him. I was asking, 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 asking. And I mean, a, a month went by. I was in a rock and a hard spot, but I knew if I, I just knew if I kept praying, I'd get an answer. But usually the answer you get is not what you're expecting. So what happened? So one day God said, Vince, if you believe I heard you, wouldn't you just ask once? And then that would be done with it. Why do you keep asking me? You actually, every time you ask me, you're not really in faith. I said, yeah, you're right. He goes, if you just ask me one time, I believe. But I said, well, God, what do I do when my mind is going crazy on me all day long? Because that's what happens when you're in between the time of asking God for an answer. Your mind plays tricks on you. And it goes crazy. And that's where fear, doubt, and unbelief is at. It's in that waiting time, right? That we do faith and patience. That's why patience is so important because patience is the ability to keep your mind strong while you're waiting on God to get that miracle. Yeah. Because your mind just wanders and goes crazy. In my mind, I mean, come on, we all dealt with that. I mean, mine was the worst of all. Like, ah. <laughs> so I said, God, what do I do in the meantime while I'm waiting for the miracle? He said, just thank me. Okay, I'll tell you what, God, I'm just going to do it one more time. I'm going to ask, we're going to settle the deal, I'm going to ask one more time. I'm going to mark it in stone, I'm going to cross the line, and from this point forward, I'm no longer asking, I'm just going to move into Thanksgiving. So I, I marked the line, I asked God one more time, and I just sealed the deal, and then I just started thanking God. Now, I was in a rock hard spot, so I just started turning my Thanksgiving, like, all, it was all day long. You know when you're in a really rock and hard spot, and you got your back against the wall, and you're believing God? And you can't get off your mind because the stress and the pressure is so high on you yep. and you have to get an answer. Come on. Mm -hmm. We've all been there. I've been there many times in my life. So I just started thanking God. Thanking God. Thanking God. Thanking God. Thanking. Thanking. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you that my son I have the finances. Thank, thank you, God. You provided for me. Thank you. And I was a P teacher. I'd go on my break. I'd be in the morning. I'd be thanking. Thanking. And you know what happened? God didn't change. Within a certain amount of time, probably within 15, 20 days, maybe 30, I changed. Amen. Something clicked inside yeah. of me. Yeah. And I went from hoping, I went from believing to knowing. Yeah. And I entered up into this realm yes. where I knew that 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 God heard me. Amen. And I knew that I had the answer. And, it, and I was in a different place now. And I said, I, I could even get fired. I don't care. And the opposite could happen. I know God heard me. And I know I have the answer. Yes. And, and you never get to these levels unless you're pushed or put in a situation. I know you guys have been put in many situations, right? So I'm sure you guys can relate to that. You have, right? JR, I, know, I know everyone in this room probably has. 
So I got I got pushed. But you know, that's what it says like there in James, you know, about when you get put in those trials, you know, thank God because it's the testing and trying of your faith. Mm -hmm. So we get put in these situations over and over again. I did put I can tell you story after story. So what happened is I got to this place where I was just I was up in cloud nine and I'd never been at this level of faith. I didn't even understand it. You know how they make that statement that um, faith is not the absence of fear, but the conquering of fear. That is true. But you know what? There's also a place in God where there is actually no fear. That's right. I've got to places where I don't even fear. It's not. I'm not even conquering fear. I'm in a whole place of boldness and aggressiveness. That's way beyond, and and there and I understand when you're moving up the ladder, you have to conquer fear, but you need the place where you don't have fear at all. And I've been to those places many, many times, but I don't have fear. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening is that my boss came to me and said, Vince, we don't want to lose you. So why don't we figure out how much money you need? They gave me a promotion. He came to me. I thought I didn't even think he was an option. Came to me, gave me a promotion. Uh, made me the athletic director, so I helped this up to school, the PE teacher, and he said, let's figure out how much money you need. We wrote down my bills, everything, and they gave me a raise to take care of everything. And, and then on top of that, one of my friends that didn't know anything was going on came to me and gave me money. Oh my like, God, Amen. I'm like, but Thank you, Lord. the money, the position, that's all, but what I learned, I learned something. And I'm trying to teach you. Yes. So then it was about, and my son was born, and it was about, uh, I think he was a year, maybe two years. And we went to a Rodney Howard Brown meeting, right? They, you guys know Rodney Howard Brown, right? Mm -hmm. I love Rodney Howard Brown. So we went down to Oakland, and I, and I, at this point, I had left that job. I sold everything. I was living by faith down at the church. I didn't have any money, and I went down. I, I got a ride down with the, the church members, but I didn't have any money for food. But I went down there. And so when the break happened after Rodney had preached, I went outside and taking what, now I'm a different person, right? See, it's all about God changing us. And I went outside and I said, God, I'm just going to ask you one time. I thank you. I thank you that you take care of me. I thank you that you provided for me. I thank you I have more than enough. And I thank you that you heard me. I walked back inside. And I kid you not, no less than five minutes later, some lady walks up to me and says, I don't know who you are, but God told me to give this to you. Yeah. She gave us a pair, one pair. And my family, we ate that pair, and that pair filled us up. And, and then later, someone bought my son some food, and, and like, God, like, but it, it, I always wanted to learn and be that person of faith. And I, th this is something I've studied for years, and I, I, cause I see it's so important in the Bible. But I just want to teach you that there's three levels, hope, belief, and knowing. And when you're moving up the ladder, you know, you'll see a lot of times in the Bible where, you know, when Jesus wanted to know that one guy, he says, well, Jesus said, he said, Father, when he was trying to get his, his son, the disciples could heal him, he goes, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And a lot of people are there. You know, they believe, but they have unbelief too. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, there's a place in God yes. you can get to. Where you're in knowing, you're in knowing, and when you hit the, that level of yes. knowing, yes, there's no fear, there's no doubt, there's no unbelief. You you know that you know that you know, and God and a lot of people don't understand this, and a lot of people never even get here, and a lot of people live in the low levels of salvation. But I'm telling you, there's a place in faith in God where you can get such breakthroughs and such miracles, and this is what God expects of us actually. This is what makes Jesus marvel at the centurion. This is why he was talking to this. If you look in the Bible, you can study all the stories of the apostles. He was rebuking them continually. Oh, Thomas, you know, you only believe if you see it, right? Well, blessed are those who believe and don't see it. I will not believe unless I put my finger in his hand. That's your side. Like if you look, there was so much unbelief and Jesus was dealing with that. And he was teaching them how to speak to mountains. And when you get to that place of knowing, you can actually speak to the mountain. There's no fear. There's no doubt. There's no unbelief. You speak to that mountain, and when you get there, mm -hmm. the eyes of the Lord are just looking for someone to get you. Mm -hmm. He's running throughout the right. whole earth, all over the earth. He'll pass over a million people to find someone with faith. Mm -hmm. And someone that will believe God at this, because we don't see God, but God will manifest himself to the person that will believe him. 
And that's what, you know, with, with Jesus, they didn't see God. They saw Jesus, but they just saw these miracles happening, right? Because the unseen God was there just boom, 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 doing miracle signs and wonders. And this goes on in every church. And most churches don't have faith. God, God will look at the church like, ah, they're, they're in hope. They're in believing. Very few get to knowing. And if you can hit that level, you will please God. Right. Without faith, it's Amen. impossible. And this Amen. is something that God wants us all to get to. Amen.